Hello everybody, uh, my name is Mitch Tavian and this is another Android Studio tutorial. Uh, so in this tutorial I want to show you how to make a bar graph like this. Um, so it's basically a follow-up of my previous tutorial um, on how to make a bar, simple bar graph using the MP Android chart and uh, library. In this one I'm just going to make a more realistic chart so I'm going to create ran a random data set and create have more dates on the x-axis up here. So if you want to learn how to that, do that, then keep watching. Uh, so we're going to continue from my previous tutorial, and um, you don't need to watch it, but because I'll just basically restart here. But uh, so if you did watch it, just take everything here and delete it. So all all you're going to have is you've imported the library, and you have your layout file here with the graph view in there, or the bar chart view, and that's that's it. Um, so we'll start by making some variables up here. So we need to make global variables. Create a random and array list. Oops, import random array list of bar entry. We'll call it bar entries, and then we can start writing the code. I think. Think. Yeah. So, so the goal of this is I'm going to create a method call, and I'm going to call it create random bar graph, and this is going to take two strings, the date one and date two, and um, so basically, I w I just want to put two dates in here and I want it to return a data set um, of random variables between these two dates. So these these two dates are going to define your x-axis basically. So I'll just put some random dates in there right now. Let's say 2016, uh, sixth month, fifth day, and 2016, uh, fifth Fifth month. I think uh, the way it works, this month has to be smaller than this one, or it won't work properly. So just keep that in mind. I think. I remember. I think when I wrote it the first time, I tried it the other way. It didn't work. So. <coughs> so now we'll create this method. Whoops! I ran on random there. Create random bar graph, and it's going to take. Two one capital date one and date two and we're gonna do some stuff. Oops, forgot the void. There we go. And I forgot to create uh dir. Okay, there we go. So we need a simple date formatter. And this is just to change the um, format of the dates because when you declare dates, they come in a different format. So we need to change the format. <coughs> date. Date 1 equals simple date format. Parse. Close this and try, try catch. And catch. Um, what was the exception? Uh, parse exception. Parse exception. E. Uh, e dot print stack trace. Okay, there we go. It's all good. Yeah. So if you ever get like random errors and you don't know what they are, just hover over it. And if it's a, if it's a any kind of exception, you can usually just enclose it in a try catch, and it's all good. And create the calendars. Yep, 
you have to initialize calendars like this or they don't work properly then you, you gotta initialize them like that and then um, clear them or it'll give you well, it'll give you a null pointer exception I think so now you, you you create them you clear them so now basically you have two empty calendars and we can start doing stuff so m date one dot set time to date one and date two dot set time date two okay and then dates which is our array list our array list um, of strings for the x-axis we're going to go dates equals in here i'm going to write another function that does this so you're going to take your um, your dates that we have created and parsed and spit out spit out an array list so i'm going to write this now um, so public so we want it to return an array list of strings we're going to call it get list it's going to take two calendar objects so it's going to take a start date and a calendar uh, end date so array list string list equals new array list and then while start date to end date it's greater than or equal to zero do this stuff list add uh, get date start date I gotta write this method also still um, so start date And we gotta return the list. Okay, so now we gotta write that um, method get date. So public string get date. And you're gonna take, oopsie, take a calendar object. I wouldn't, if, uh, if you're following along, I wouldn't worry too much about this. Um, just straight up copy it. It's just a, it's just a clever way to spit out a nice array list. In the right format. Oops, this needs to be capitals. So we need to close this because we're using a simple data formatter again. Yeah, like if, if you're if you're just following along, my suggestion is just straight up copy this method from me and this method from me. Don't don't worry about it.
Okay, I need to catch, yeah. Uh, okay. Catch the parse exception. Okay. And then we just need to return. That. And this is still red. Because I forgot the new. There we go. Okay, so now when we call the get list, it's going to return a, an array list of string type of between two dates. So you can declare two calendar dates, use this method, and it will return a array list of strings of dates in between these two dates. So that is where we're at there. And what's next? Now we're going to make our bar entries. This new array list. And this is an array list of bar entries that we defined up here. Yeah, array list bar entries. And now to create our, um, our random data set for the y-axis. So for, and I like to do for loops, they're probably my favorite. So we want this to go um, for, as, uh, we want to create just as many data points as we have in our dates array list. Well, that only makes sense. And we're going to create um, a Ran, uh, random data set of numbers in between um, 1 and 100 or I think it's 1 and 100 if you do it like this so um, what this random.next float will, will create is a, is a random number in between um, 0 and 1 so if you multiply by 100 essentially you're getting a random number in between 0 and 100 then you need to Add the bar entries. So you put, oops, I don't need brackets there. Oh, uh, yeah, that's fine. And J, and then um, yeah. So that should that should do it. We can go outside of here and create our bar data set, just like we did in the previous tutorial. There's a new bar data set. Throw our bar entries into here and give it a label, call it dates. <coughs> uh, bar, da no, bar data this time. Bar data equals bar data. And we throw our dates for the x-axis. And we throw our bar data set for our y-axis. Then we just set our data to bar data. And um, I'm just going to set a description. I don't think I showed how to do that in the previous tutorial. So set description, and we're gonna call it uh, my first bar graph! Exclamation mark, because we're super excited about it. And that should be it. So I'm gonna run the emulator. So basically, yeah, what we do is we have one method in our own create, and you input. Um, so you can see how this would be much more applicable to an app. You could. Uh, prompt the user for two dates, say, and um, and what it will return is ra a random, a randomly generated bar graph uh, of data in between these two dates. It's blank. Why is it blank? It should not be blank. X. Clear those. Oh, I forgot to declare my random. That's why, yeah, so random new random, just like that, oops, equals new random, that's why, the data wasn't being generated. So please work, so I don't look stupid, there we go, oh, what? <laughs> day one, day two, do I have day one and day two mixed up? I do have, I have day one and day two mixed up. God damn it. So actually, I think that has to be. Yeah. 
Okay, so I found the problem. I had to cut the video there because um, I goofed. So uh, the date, this one actually has to be the smaller date, and this one has to be the like later in date time, or it it doesn't work properly. I know I told you at the beginning of the video it was the other way around, but it is definitely this way around. So I just ran the emulator and I got this. So you can see our randomly generated data and on the x-axis we have our dates. And I can't really show you because of the emulator, but if this was a real, if you were running this on a real device, you could scale it and zoom in um, by setting the properties that I showed in the previous video. And you can see, you'd be able to see like more specifically like right where this bar graph was, but you can't on the emulator really. So yeah, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, leave a comment if you want me to do more tutorials using this library because it's, it's, it's pretty sweet library. And uh, if you like the video, like the video. Thanks for watching.